All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at something a little bit different. We're going to use nothing more than the built-in microphones in the phone to work out the direction of a sound. Um, most people don't realize you can do this with such a simple setup, but, but with the right measurements and a bit of audio analysis, you can actually tell where the sound arrived from. And what's more importantly for this case, whether it came from above or below. I'm going to show you how we measure that time difference between the two microphones, how that gives us an angle of arrival, how we can use that information to build a 3D picture of what happened. Not trying to name a specific location or say it came from this roof or that roof. It's not the purpose here. The goal is simply to prove with physics the sound originated from above the device. Later on, once we have that, we can start exploring possible locations. So as you can see, the angle itself is uh, pretty close to Charlie and it is facing towards the right hand side of the tunnel that Charlie is sitting in front of. Being so close to Charlie, it gives us quite a clear representation of the audio um, around the area where Charlie was sitting. Um, I think the, the most important thing to consider here is the phone is in its vertical position. Here we have the waveform um, from that video file and um, I have focused in on the actual crack of the gun, the actual first transient. And the idea here is just to give it a quick analysis to see what it represents. The picture I posted and the, the point I raised on Jason Goodman's show, the crowdsource the truth. I appreciate him allowing me to use his platform to share my findings. Now, the recording I shared on there, the position of the left speaker, uh, the, sorry, the left microphone um, was greater than the right. And the position of this one is the right is greater than the left. Now, as I've already mentioned a couple of times now, um, the phone is recorded in a vertical position. And it's probably wise to just take a, a, a look at why that is so significant. If we just take most iPhones, um, they have a stereo recording um, function and the microphone is placed on the top, the right microphone is placed on the top and the bottom microphone is the left microphone. This is substantial because the microphone is actually giving us a Z axis now. Before, up until now, we've been working on left, right, forward and backwards to create a horizontal plane. But for the first time, we can introduce the Z axis. Now, you may wonder how um, the phone represents an up and down location as a stereo recording. And what phones essentially do is something called beamforming. If you look at the four elements chart there, you can sort of gather what's happening. So the left and the right speaker, um, the left and the right speaker are being sent through the circuitry um, and converged as one to create the beam, the, the focal point in the middle. And then the phase relationship, which is the, the difference in time from the left and the right, is played off of each other and calculated essentially to give maximum width to the perceived stereo enhancement. I mean, it's not enhancing the stereo as such, it's just cancelling out the weaker microphone to replace the sound with the stronger microphone, which makes it pretty accurate when it comes to um, stereo placement. Now, to demonstrate this, I am just going to put in a simple silent, which is a synthesizer. I am literally just going to play a sound and I am going to change the phase relationship using this simple delay plugin that comes with Ableton. As you can hear, the change in the distance between the left and the right speaker in point points of a millisecond, not even milliseconds, but the difference in milliseconds changes the relationship of the waveform with the left and the right speaker. If your phone's in mono, you will hear that really as a sort of sound. What the phone will be doing is it will be taking a measurement of that gap. What's significant is the fact that the phone beams that um, signal together from the left and the right to create the constant and then it subtracts 
from that line to replace the most eff effective side um, using the phase relationship that we just witnessed. All it is is measuring the difference in time between the input of the left mic and the right mic. Simple as that. <laughs> See what I've got to live with. Come here. Meet my really annoying dog, Mr. Dinkles. He's a good boy. He's fucking annoying. Come on. So, back to the waveform, um, and we can take a little zoom in and see what we see. So if we go down to the sample size, which is less than a millisecond, I will add, that you can um, measure from one peak to the next peak and calculate the difference in time. So if I calculate down here, I can see the difference in samples from 296 to 300, which gives me four sample rates to work out at the speed of stereo over here. You can see it, 44, 100 hertz. So we take the sample difference, which is four, and then we divide that by the sample rate, which is 44,100. Um, that gives us about 0 0.0000907 seconds. That's roughly 90.7 microseconds, not milliseconds. From that difference in distance, we can work out the angle that the uh, sound came in from. Um, and I suppose what's more important here is not so much the angle, but whether it was steep or shallow, because the shot at the distance would be shallow. When we do the maths, it works out to about 3.25 degrees above horizontal. Um, now that might sound like a small number, but in acoustic terms, it's actually a steep angle. It means the sound wasn't coming in level to the device. It was coming, or from below, it was clearly coming from above. Um, even a couple of degrees here represents a significant, quite a significant difference. At 100 meters away, a three degree difference in angle would change about five and a half meters higher, I believe. Um, and again, that is not to take into the account of the direction of the sound coming in because it wasn't vertically down. So to save guessing on that, we can just leave it at the sound actually arrives from above. All right, so that's where we're gonna leave this one. We've gone through the phase relationship using a synthesizer. We've talked about how those tiny differences work. We've looked at the waveform and measured them properly. Uh, we've gone, we've even gone and brought in a bit of how beamforming reinforces the information. Um, feel free to look up on that stuff if you feel it's relevant. Um, the bottom line here is simple. The evidence is clear. The top microphone heard the sound first. The bottom microphone heard it a fraction of a microsecond later. That difference between those two is measurable and consistent. That tells us the sound didn't come from the same level as the phone, and it definitely didn't come from below. It came from above. We're not speculating, we're not guessing, we're measuring. And when you put all of those little steps together, the phase, the timing, the waveform analysis, the, the angle, they all point to the same conclusion. This sound come from above the device, period. And that's a fact we can now build on for the next stages of the investigation. Thanks for your time.